Elephants, with their majestic and beautiful appearance, are known to be dangerous animals. In Zimbabwe's Menopause National Park, a group of rangers encountered a distressing sight when an injured elephant approached them. Located in the far north of the country, Menopause National Park is renowned for its abundant wildlife, including elephants, hippos, and crocodiles. The park's long pool attracts large populations of animals, while lions patiently wait for prey around the waterhole at Shitake Spring. Animals coexist peacefully, creating a serene environment protected from external threats. Spanning over 219,600 hectares, 540 acres, the park covers a vast area, making it challenging to locate specific animals without trackers or assistance. However, the park is regularly patrolled by rangers who monitor the well-being of the wildlife, checking on sick or injured animals and occasionally deterring poachers. Usually, there is little drama or cause for concern within the park's boundaries. But on this particular day, something peculiar occurred. As the ranger team drove through the territory dominated by large bull elephants, tranquility reigned. It was midday, and they decided to take a break, seeking shade under a tree while quenching their thirst. Suddenly, they spotted an elephant approaching from the distance, a massive male bull. Despite the popular belief that elephants are gentle creatures, they can be aggressive and territorial. The combination of their anger and formidable size makes them formidable opponents. Rangers typically avoid spending time near these bull elephants due to the risk of sudden attacks on their vehicles, capable of causing severe damage or even fatal injuries. The approaching bull, known as Pretty Boy, triggered the ranger's instinct to speed away to safety. Fully grown male elephants can reach heights of up to 4 meters, 13 feet, and weigh as much as 6,000 kilograms, 15,000 pounds. It takes around 35 to 40 years for males to reach their full size, and they can live in the wild for 60 to 70 years. These elephants possess incredible strength, capable of carrying up to 9,000 kilograms, 20,000 pounds, equivalent to the weight of 130 adult humans. Given these facts, it was evident why the rangers were eager to evade the massive elephant's path. However, just as the ranger behind the wheel prepared to flee, he noticed something peculiar about the approaching elephant. It seemed to be walking towards them in a dazed manner, exhibiting abnormal behavior. The sight of tears streaming down its dusty cheeks revealed the elephant's distress, evoking a sympathetic response from the rangers. Instead of displaying aggression, the elephant, known as Pretty Boy, approached the vehicle slowly, as if pleading for help. Witnessing an elephant cry was a rare occurrence, highlighting the intelligence, complexity, and emotional depth of these magnificent animals. Similar to humans, elephants experience various emotions, celebrating joyous occasions while mourning their own losses. In times of emotional turmoil, elephants typically seek solace among their herd. Hence, Pretty Boy's solitary approach with visible distress raised concerns among everyone present. Upon closer examination, it became apparent that the elephant was injured, causing him to shed tears of pain. Injuries were not uncommon among elephants on the preserve. They sometimes sustained cuts, bruises, or even broken bones from slips and falls. Bull elephants occasionally engaged in fierce battles, resulting in deep wounds on their opponents' bodies. However, Pretty Boy's injury appeared distinctively abnormal, triggering considerable worry among the rangers. The severity of the situation prompted them to request the assistance of an elephant specialist with a tranquilizer gun. After approximately 45 minutes, the specialized veterinarian arrived at the scene. Throughout this time, Pretty Boy stood, his pleading gaze fixed upon the rangers. Using binoculars, they attempted to assess the injury but could only discern limited details from such a distance, especially with the elephant's erratic movements. It was evident, however, that there was a bleeding wound on Pretty Boy's head, causing immense pain. The enigma surrounding the cause of the injury heightened their collective anxiety. With the arrival of the veterinarian, Pretty Boy became the target of the tranquilizer gun, which swiftly injected a sedative into his left side. Within moments, the colossal elephant collapsed to his knees, tumbling onto his side. The rangers waited cautiously, 
ensuring that the tranquilizer took full effect before approaching him. Once they confirmed Pretty Boy's unconscious state, they cautiously moved closer, eager to investigate and treat his injuries. While one ranger monitored signs of his awakening, the rest of the team diligently attended to Pretty Boy's wounds. Blood samples were taken, his entire body was examined, and they carefully inspected the prominent head injury. However, what they discovered left them utterly appalled and shocked. It surpassed their worst fears, leaving them astounded and disturbed. It appeared that a beautiful elephant, known as Pretty Boy, had been shot in the forehead, most likely by a poacher. There was a round hole surrounded by blood, and it was weeping heavily. Fortunately, the bullet had not penetrated his skull and reached his brain. If it had, Pretty Boy would have died instantly. This elephant was both fortunate and unfortunate at the same time. Unfortunate because he had been shot, but fortunate because he had survived. It seemed that the poacher who shot him lacked experience in hunting animals of that size. The bullet was too small to kill an elephant, but it still caused a great deal of painful damage. The impact of the bullet had left Pretty Boy dazed, which explained his calm and tranquil demeanor. The park rangers and the veterinarian worked diligently to remove the bullet fragment from the wound and ensured proper cleaning to prevent any potential infection. Although the bullets hadn't brought Pretty Boy down, a severe infection could have. After treating the elephant, the team stepped back and waited for him to regain consciousness. Eventually, he awakened, appearing confused and still somewhat dazed. He sat for a while before gathering the strength to stand up again. The vets would closely monitor Pretty Boy in the coming days. Despite being injured by a human, he had the intelligence to seek help from them. The rangers pledged to continue their fight to protect the elephants and other animals of Manipool's national park and eradicate poaching entirely. Now, turning to you, what are your thoughts on this incredible story? How would you have reacted if you had encountered a distraught elephant? Would you have tried to assist or let nature take its course? We always appreciate hearing from you, so please share your thoughts and opinions in the comments section below. A photographer was photographing migrating elephants. The scene was so spectacular that he wanted to record the wonderful moment that at this moment he suddenly found a strange figure among the elephants and was startled to take a closer look at it. What did the photographer discover? Timothy worked as an animal keeper in South Africa's Kruger National Park for several years. Kruger National Park is one of the most famous animal reserves in Africa. It is the largest wildlife reserve on the entire South African continent, stretching 400 kilometers from north to south and 70 kilometers from east to west. It has an area the size of Wales in the United Kingdom, with a total area of 20,000 square kilometers. Kruger National Park is home to many large species, including elephants, lions, rhinos, leopards and buffaloes. There are about 12,000 elephants, 27,000 African buffaloes, and 1,000 leopards call this home among the many leopards. Of course, there are a variety of other wild animals. Why did Timothy work in Kruger National Park for so long? In fact, Timothy has liked to go to the park to see these animals since he was very young, even though he was very young at the time, but since then he has decided his future direction. In the early years, Timothy often wondered whether he would eventually become a biologist, an animal ranger, or a park employee, and he chose the latter. Because in addition to taking care of animals, he is also a part-time photographer, he can record precious moments for the animals he loves. His life as a park ranger has been very fulfilling, as he hoped, he likes to stay with animals, and the natural environment gives him a sense of life satisfaction. He couldn't explain the feeling, but he knew he had always had a soft spot for animals. On this day, forest rangers were guiding a group of people through the wildlife sanctuary, and everything was going well as usual. When they sit back and walk around the park, everything looked no different from normal, the sun was at the highest point in the sky, and groups of animals continued to move around. Timothy, with a camera around his neck, was trying to understand the animals by observing their daily activities. In this park, in addition to his duties as a tour guide, Timothy was also assigned another task, 
that is, to investigate some animals in the park, study the activities and lifestyles of these animals. They intend to collect these things on the basis of notes, so as to help the park improve the living conditions of the animals and make their lives more enjoyable. Timothy carried his camera, so he could observe wild animals while recording with images, and the longer he spends time with them, the more he loves them. He also wanted them to be happy and more comfortable. On that hot afternoon, Timothy was guiding the tourists as usual, and suddenly he stopped because there was a herd of elephants migrating. He picked up his camera to record the moment. When one of his companions pointed to the middle of the herd, and following the direction of his colleague, Timothy noticed that there seemed to be some strange creature among the elephants. But from where they stood, it was hard to tell what it was. Timothy knew that elephant migration was very common, not only elephants, many animals will undergo regional changes due to environment, climate, season and other reasons, which is a normal behavior of the herd, but it is impossible for them to migrate with other creatures. Timothy continued his duties as a park guide, leading visitors in the area, and as they left, Timothy couldn't help wondering what the strange thing in the elephant herd was. But when he looked back, he noticed that the elephant had gone further. Timothy tried to convince himself that he must have seen it wrong, and he decided to forget about it. Timothy continued his patrol with the other rangers. That night, when all the visitors left the park, the weather was comfortable. Timothy stood in the park and could see all the residents nearby. He enjoyed the tranquility. Just as he was out of his mind, the elephants he had met in the afternoon came here, and this time they were closer than before, and Timothy could really see them clearly. As he had guessed before, they had migrated here, however, Timothy soon realized that something was wrong. The strange creature he had seen in the afternoon was not an illusion, but it was too unreasonable. As a park ranger who has been watching animals for a long time, Timothy knows the habits of animals, especially elephants, because elephants are his favorite, and he spends a lot of time around these huge and majestic beasts, they have a strong sense of territory and will never allow other animals to come near. But strangely, the particular creature was still playing with the elephant, and the elephant didn't seem to be bothered by the creature's presence. Instead, the elephants were trying to protect it from harm. Timothy was surprised, of course, that most of the time elephants were gentle giants, but it was unusual to find them playing with other animals, especially small species. Timothy decided to find out the truth of the matter. He slowly approached the elephants to avoid disturbing the animals. When he got closer, Timothy was able to see the creature very well. When he saw the creature, his mouth instantly opened wide, something he had never seen before. Timothy felt lucky to meet such a rare and magical creature. He raised his trembling hands, quickly grabbed the camera and began to shoot. Timothy has traveled for many years, traversed wilderness, and done all kinds of environmental protection work, but he has never encountered anything like this. Timothy played back the camera to make sure he recorded every aspect of the experience. It's one thing to encounter something so rare, but it's quite another to be able to capture it, and he'll probably never witness the miracle again. It was a baby elephant, but not a normal elephant, its skin was bright pink, very small, it looked almost morbid, even a little precocious. It is unusual to see pink elephants, although they are occasionally seen in Asia because this particular skin discoloration is caused by a disease that causes local skin and other parts of the body to lose pigmentation. This phenomenon is often mistaken for albinism, but in fact the two are not the same. While these pink elephants may seem rare and incredible, it means that their future is often challenging and given that the condition is caused by jet mutations, baby elephants are often affected, and they are often obvious targets for predators. Some herds rejected the existence of the pink elephants, which were banished or fled, making the discovery all the more shocking. Because this herd of elephants did not repel the newborn baby elephant, but protected it, when the baby elephant is playing on the grass, other baby elephants will walk over and play with it or observe the difference of the baby elephant. Timothy and his companions left the sanctuary and returned to their workstation eager to tell everyone what they had seen. Timothy happily shared photos and videos of this incredible sight, and even gave an interview to the Animal Center publication. 
He later told Carter News that he was very excited because it was something unusual. He had only heard of the pink elephant before, but it didn't end well. However, the baby elephant was playing among the beasts that loved and accepted it, and everything seemed so good, and he was very happy to capture this moment. Mason, an animal cardiologist who has dedicated his life to caring for animals in a large wildlife reserve. He has always had a love for animals and feels fortunate to spend his days among a variety of creatures, including lions, deer, and elephants. Mason's routine at work involves checking up on all the animals each morning, examining them for any changes or developments. He takes great care to be respectful around the animals and always takes necessary precautions, knowing that they are still wild creatures despite being in a wildlife reserve. One day, while on a drive to his special spot, Mason comes across a lone elephant standing in the middle of the road. He knows it's best not to get too close to the animal, so he parks his vehicle and waits to see what the elephant will do. As he observes the elephant, Mason begins to wonder why it's standing alone in one spot. He surmises that it has likely been separated from its herd and is waiting for them to return. He knows that experts have found that elephants will often return to certain landmarks to wait for members of their herd, hoping that they will find them again. Mason waits patiently in his car, watching the elephant and musing over the reasons for its behavior. When park rangers arrive, they are shocked to learn that Mason, a cardiologist, had called for help. However, they soon realize the significance of the situation and work to reunite the elephant with its herd. Mason, an animal cardiologist who had a great love for animals, was on his routine checkup at the wildlife reserve when he noticed something unusual. He had a secret spot in the reserve where he would go to enjoy the scenic view. One day, while driving to his special spot, he saw a lone elephant standing still in the middle of the road. The animal was not moving its tail or ears, and this intrigued Mason. After a few minutes of observation, he noticed that the elephant was completely stiff, which was not typical behavior for a resting elephant. Mason's curiosity grew, and he decided to investigate further. He approached the elephant slowly, being cautious not to spook the animal. The elephant noticed Mason's presence but did not react. Mason leaned on his car and waited for the elephant to lose interest in him. Then, he approached the animal on foot with binoculars in hand. When he used the binoculars, he saw something that shocked him, the elephant was crying for help, with tears streaming down its face. Mason quickly called the medical team back at the station to inform them of what he had seen. They arrived shortly, and with the help of Mason's expertise, they were able to figure out what was wrong with the animal. It turned out that the elephant was suffering from a severe cardiac problem. Mason's keen observation skills had saved the animal's life. The man's trust in his instincts led him to discover that the elephant was in desperate need of help. Overcome with gratitude, he knew he had to act quickly to alleviate the animal's pain. Despite his fear, he approached the elephant slowly, trying not to frighten it any further. The elephant watched him with sad eyes, and the man could feel its pain. He offered comforting words, knowing that animals could sense emotions through tone. As they waited for the medical team to arrive, the man continued to offer words of comfort. After a 30-minute wait, the vet cardiologist and his team arrived, and the man explained what he had seen. They were shocked and they saw the large abscess on the elephant's rear. The medical team immediately began working to sedate the animal, but moving a 300-pound creature was no easy task. As the elephant began to feel the effects of the tranquilizer, it did something amazing. It wrapped its trunk around the man's legs before falling asleep. The man gently rubbed the elephant's head as it drifted off. With the elephant sedated, the medical team got to work on treating the abscess. The man watched as they worked, grateful that he had trusted his instincts and stayed with the animal. It was a touching moment when the elephant wrapped its trunk around him, and he knew that he had made a difference in its life. He was glad that he could help alleviate its pain and that the medical team was able to provide the necessary treatment. Mason was overwhelmed with gratitude when he realized that the elephant he had approached desperately needed help. Despite his fear, he slowly approached the animal, 
offering comforting words and soothing intentions, until a team of medical professionals arrived to help. The elephant had a large abscess on its rear that needed to be drained and treated with medication, which the team did quickly and efficiently, aware that the animal could wake up and lash out in fear at any moment. After completing the medical intervention, the team watched as the elephant slowly regained consciousness, standing up and swishing its tail in appreciation of their work. The team left the site, planning to return the next day for a follow-up treatment. However, just as they were about to start their cars, the elephant surprised them all by walking slowly towards them. Tense with anticipation, the team watched as the animal approached Mason's car and put its trunk through the window, wrapping it around Mason in what looked like a gesture of gratitude for getting help. This touching moment brought tears to the eyes of everyone who witnessed it, especially Mason, who was deeply moved by the elephant's gratitude. As the elephant quietly walked away, the team was left in awe, grateful for the experience of a lifetime. It was a truly magical moment that reminded them of the special connection between humans and animals and the importance of helping those in need, even when it requires pushing aside our fears and instincts. Two Australian Coast Guard members spotted a strange object floating in the water they mistook for a toy. Two Coast Guard members were returning from a mission when they saw an object floating in the sea. At first they thought it was a stuffed animal, but as they paced closer, they realized it wasn't a stuffed animal. Toys, but something else. They spotted the object in the middle of the sea and felt something was wrong with it, so the man drove past the mooring point three times to look carefully at the object in front of the wooden pole, the object had brown hair floating on the water, nothing about the object except for the hair bobbing up and down at every turn. He figured maybe someone lost their stuffed animal, but just a second after the object started moving, it actually started throwing its arms up and down, and it started sliding into the water from where it was, and his heart skipped a beat when he realized what it was. Gary Sissons and Sean Hannum, both members of the Australian Volunteer Coast Guard, went down to sea earlier than usual in the morning, returning from towing a stranded boat near Warners, and now their mission accomplished, they are heading back to shore, off the coast of Victoria. Sean knew what to do and headed towards the mooring and stopped the boat's engine to get closer to the object. The object was brown, so as they accelerated closer, it became more and more obvious, and they realized how big it was, and gradually, the soaked object came out, and at the time, Gary thought it was a pile of dust and algae, sure they got stuck in the moorings, but they weren't. Sean tried to keep his eyes open to see what it was. There were strands of long brown hair being pulled by waves. A strange sight awaited them. As they got closer, they realized that the object had limbs. Yes, there are two arms and two legs, yet the object does not move at all. Sean had never been so terrified and confused, and if this wasn't a soft toy then what was, they would soon find out that the boat was now running parallel to the moorings, and as far as the men were concerned they were all silent and they are full of anxiety, fear and confusion. Gary's heart was in his throat as he approached, and they were all praying that it wasn't a corpse. Sean bent down to see what it was, and he saw that it was heavy and had wet lumps, another thing in his limb, that's for sure. Sean didn't know they made a mistake and he steered the boat and said let's go and he turned the other way but as they started to move away from the wood they started the engine and gave the thing a pull and its limbs began to move. Wait, Sean yelled, stop. Gary turned to see Sean's face flushed with fear. The man killed the engine in an instant, he was shaking with fear, he rushed to Sean, they bent forward, looked at it again, but again, the thing didn't move at all. Gary and Sean's heart stopped when it started twisting, Sean said, I saw its arms move. He pointed his finger at it and said, what I saw there, this man was absolutely right. Gary further explained that it wasn't a stuffed animal, and Sean took a closer look to see what it was. The object didn't look like any marine animal, and it's worth noting here that this man had traveled the oceans for a significant portion of his life, yet he had never seen anything like it once, when the man realized he was actually staring into the object's small black eyes that he was startled again. The mystery has arisen again. The man was still trying to figure out what it was when the mass began to emerge from the water. 
After a while, the object raised its head and began struggling to stay on the surface. Afterwards, it started sliding off the black tires, and no matter how hard it tried, it couldn't manage to grab them. It's not a toy, but a living creature, struggling in pain, trying its best to surface, but unfortunately, none of its efforts are bringing any results. It tried to grab the pole with its messy arms, but to no avail. Sean sprang into action as he sprinted from the boat to it to help the animal. However, this step seemed to backfire as the animal had to struggle more when they rowed the boat towards it, creating waves due to the speed of the boat, a heartbreaking scene, and while he wanted to help the creature, he didn't determine if it wants him close to it. He didn't dare try, however, his long black claws had left many scratches on the pole as he held it, and he wasn't sure if the animal would let him touch it. When he realized it was a koala, it dawned on him, what is it doing in the bay now, how did it come so far? They had many questions on their minds, but due to time constraints, they decided to rescue the trapped animal first, and he jumped into the frigid water without thinking twice. He moved backwards along the ropes, which caught the tires, and Sean discovered from these ropes that the koala was hindering the rescue mission. On the other side, Gary threw a rescue board to Sean in the water, Sean immediately held it, and he walked towards the koala with excitement, and then something unexpected happened to him. The koala went limp at the sight of him approaching, ready to hand itself over to Sean. Sean picked it up and put it on the board, seeing the creature staring at him with weary brown eyes, before letting out a sigh and laying himself down on the board. At that moment, fear runs through their brains, is luck on their side? Or are they crazy? Sean returned to the boat with the exhausted koala and brought it aboard. The koala was motionless, and Gary and Sean were worried that maybe the koala had given up his life. They pushed that idea aside, covered it with a thermal blanket and fed it, Sean recalls, with the engine off and me standing on the ladder in the stern and throwing the blanket over him. I was watching how it was doing and after it had gained some warmth the creature woke up from a coma and it moved its head very slowly, although that was enough to indicate that the koala was healthy. Both of them are relieved that this is the first time they have encountered such a situation, so they don't know how to deal with them. At this moment, Sean had an idea. He clearly knew that there was an uninhabited island around them, which was a colony of koalas. He knew that it would be to rescue this koala and help him overcome the pain. The best place to experience. This place will bring him peace, perhaps the island from which the koala was washed towards the mooring. But it's still hard to understand how the koala managed to reach 1,000 feet off land, where it ended up clinging to wooden mooring poles to survive. However, they know that koalas can swim, but they cannot swim for long periods of time, they are not good at swimming, and they would rather avoid it and go to other paths. Half an hour later, they arrived at Quail Island. After that, they held the koala in their hands and placed it near some bushes. However, the koala lay there motionless, staring at some object in the distance, their concern was growing that perhaps its misadventures with the ocean had caused it to lose its mind. Did they really save the koala? They're not sure, Given the koala's current state it seems to have lost all hope of survival, but the pair haven't given up hope and what lies ahead remains a mystery. The koala turned around and looked at the two people who had rescued it. After that, it stood up, came out of the warm blanket, and limped towards the bushes. After a while, the koala disappeared. With big smiles on Sean and Gary's faces, they managed to rescue the koala, which one of the crew recalled was very shocking. It's not every day the crew encounters a koala in the water, when the koala seemed very happy when pulled on the back of the boat, and it was a great story, which made for a happy ending for those who didn't know the truth of the matter. Koalas are generally harmless, but can cause trouble by causing some horrible wounds with their claws and teeth, and not only that, but sometimes, they can transmit diseases to humans, in which case Sean took a big risk risks of. While Sean was unscratched handling the koala, he made a joke on Facebook that I lost two fingers and had scratches from head to toe, but he walked away gracefully. Those koalas that fell into the water are very vicious. In a short time, the story of the rescue spread and everyone who read it was thrilled, praising Sean and Gary for their act of kindness. 
Westport Coast Guard Commander Jeremy West commented, It's amazing, it's not every day you come across a koala in the water and the koala looked happy when they were back on land. One commenter exclaimed, Wow poor little guy, well done. Hannum replied that it was just the protectionism in me at work. His words also shed light on the current situation of koalas, unfortunately, koalas are included in the list of endangered animals, published by the International Union for Conservation of Nature IUCN, this situation is caused by habitat loss and some incidents in the city.